In this video, we'll uh, make a big jump conceptually in how we've been talking about quantum mechanics. So in the past, we've talked about state vectors as the thing that represents physical states in our Hilbert space. So uh, we, if we have um, a system of, for example, a atom in a spin one, a spin one half atom, um, then it can be in a plus and a minus state, and we represent the um, the superposition of those basis states or the, the linear combination of those basis states um, as the state factor phi. Now there are states, as we know now, that do not have a corresponding state um, that can be written as a tensor product of, of multiple subspaces. So there are these entangled states and it's more difficult to describe those states with the state factors if, for example, we only have um, the opportunity to measure um, one part of those, uh, of those Hilbert states. If we, for example, only have access to H1 and not to H2, there is some unknown um, aspects about the state that we cannot access. Um, and in general, for example, if we look at uh, thermally distributed um, systems, there will be information about phi that, um, that we do not have, and so we will have um, only incomplete information to describe the state. So how do we deal with that? Well, what we will do is we'll introduce what is called a state operator. So um, similarly, how we uh, um, introduced operators that correspond to physical observables, we'll introduce operators now to represent the state, and in particular to represent the knowledge we have about the state, the information we have. And so where we uh, introduce the state operator rho as the sum over projection operators multiplied with probabilities um, of, uh, of finding um, this particular state phi, or, or of having that particular um, state phi. So let's, uh, let's just look back at uh, how this um, what this means in the case of, uh, of pure states. So pure states is what we've been wi working with all along. So in that case, the probability is one for one state um, and zero for all, others, um, all other possible states. So we'll just end up having a simple projection operator that is equal to phi, um, phi ket with a phi bra. So there's a strong connection there with the state itself already in the mathematics that we're, uh, we're using here. Now, the real reason for introducing the state operator is to describe mixtures, um, mixtures of many different kinds of states. For example, what if I have 50% probability of starting from a, uh, a plus state in a spin one half system and 50% probability of having a minus state. So then we'd find um, one half plus 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 one half minus minus. So that allows us to introduce some um, incomplete knowledge about the state of the system already in an operator. And again, even in the case of mixtures, of course, we'll have, um, we'll have uh, projection operators that, uh, that play a role there. Okay, so for the pure state, as I already pointed out, rho is phi, um, phi with phi, the outer product. So that gives us um, these projection operators. Um, and this actually gives us an, a little bit of an additional benefit over um, using the state itself to describe the, the system because rho is actually independent of the phase. If we think about um, applying a phase uh, change, um, we, we multiply with e to the i alpha for some real number alpha, um, then uh, this, this dependence on the phase will actually disappear. So whereas previously we had to specify that the states um, are described by rays, um, normalized rays or, or basis vectors of rays as subspaces in the Hilbert space. Now we can get away from that. Um, we can just say that we describe um, or states as pure states and the information that this is independent of the phase is actually included in that because the phase will drop out. And then again, if you look at mixtures, um, this, uh, this changes into um, a, a weighted sum of several projection operators um, weighted with the probability of, uh, of having that particular state in, uh, um, in, in phi. So again, the important thing here is that rho is not um, an object anymore or not a, 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 an element of the vector space. Rho has now become an operator that operates on our Hilbert space. And so the state is represented by the state operator, not by a state vector anymore. 
Now, why would we want to do that? Well, um, one thing we can do is look at the pure state. And um, we'll look at the pure state as a, as a way of, uh, of justifying why this might make sense. And so let's start with looking at an expectation value for an operator A in this pure state. And the, op the expectation value is just um, the uh, inner product of phi with operator A and phi. If we write this in a basis M, um, or basis n, which are the same basis here, I'm um, just using a different dummy index, then um, we can introduce our completeness relation over n here and over m here. Um, we'll have our matrix representation a and m in the middle, um, and we'll have our projections of phi on the basis n and phi on the basis m, which gives our, our, us our coefficients. Now what I'll do is I'll take this m phi and I'll move it to the front, that gives me my um, projection operator phi phi um, in the middle here. Um, so that's my p sub phi. And then I have my n and n that's left over here. That's again a completeness relation, so I can take that out. And what I'm left with is the sum over m of the matrix element of the projection operator on phi multiplied or working on the operator a. So the matrix element m and m that gives me my, my trace. So the trace of the projection operator on phi operating on the linear operator a or the trace of rho times a gives me my expectation value. Uh, so if, if nothing else, then at least the elegance of this expression, the trace of rho times the linear operator um, should convince you that this may have some, uh, some benefit. Now, what happens if we go to a mixed state well, it, it depends on how we, uh, or it all relies on how we introduce the expectation values. And we'll introduce the expectation value naturally as um, the, the sum, the weighted sum with the probabilities times the um, expectation value for all of the states over which I am summing. Okay, so if I again have um, an expectation value, or if I have a 50% probability of finding a plus state, of having a, a plus state, and a 50% probability of having a minus state, then I will sum here over two terms, one expectation value corresponding with the plus state and an expectation value corresponding to the minus state. Um, and if I then uh, go through the same derivation, and actually it, it happens fa fairly quickly, the only thing I need to do is, is write my um, expectation value here using the states phi alpha, um, and uh, then I immediately find that uh, I again have this trace of rho times a after absorbing the sum over the probabilities back into rho. So it turns out that uh, um, expectation values can be written as the trace of the state operator multiplied with, um, the, uh, with, with the linear operator corresponding with the physical property. Um, I do want to point out, though I don't want to make it an important um, uh, name that I'll associate it with rho, but rho is also often referred to as the, as the density operator, um, but uh, in our case, we'll, uh, we'll keep calling this the, the state operator until we can actually associate a density with it um, when we talk about continuous observables. So there are several properties that this uh, state operator has um, already based on the definition. Um, you can see it's, it's Hermitian. Um, Hermitian, it's, um, it's got a trace that is equal to one um, in particular, for the case of a, of a pure state, you can immediately see that because it's a projection operator onto a one-dimensional subspace. Why is it a projection operator? Well, we come back, go back to the last uh, um, property that's listed here. So rho squared is equal to rho um, because it's Hermitian. That also means that rho dagger rho is equal to rho. Um, and if rho dagger rho is equal to rho, that means that rho has to be a projection operator. That's a property we've, we've proven earlier in the course. And then finally, a row is positive definite, so um, any uh, matrix element of row will be, posi will be um, positive and only equal to zero when uh, the, the state phi itself is equal to zero. Um, so those are the properties of the state operator. Again, um, they're important uh, in, in uh, an entirely new way of describing um, how we think about states um, in, uh, in, in quantum mechanics. And one of the things we'll do next is uh, look at how this changes or postulates in uh, quantum mechanics. So stay tuned for that.